Good morning. I want to say, if you called me and we talked, thank you. Thank you very much. So one of the things that we're getting ready to do is work in the mentorship program and the consulting program. Now, essentially, there's a short question there. First comment below. Just go ahead and hit that first comment and you can either pick mentorship or you can pick consulting calls. Consulting calls about, about your business, about your LLCs, about business credit, all that stuff is below. So one of the things that we want to do is to help you go ahead and be successful in the things that you wanna do. So all of that information is below. All right, so how does one prepare for hard times? And this is pretty much a really big issue that's coming. Um, I'm looking at the signals, I'm looking at the flags, I'm looking at all the things that's happening, and we could be rest assured that we're gonna have a recession in the beginning of 2024. If we don't, I will be surprised. But instead of talking about, okay, the recession's coming, it's getting bad, layoffs are coming, all of these things, what can you do? And this is something, once again, uh, thank you to all the people who called me and set up, gave me new perspectives and insights and wisdom on the things that you can do to set up, well, not set up, but essentially letting me know exactly where you are in terms of life and business and setting up. I had a very interesting uh, call last night with someone who was actually somewhat successful with online businesses, but just kept quitting, just kept quitting. So one of the things that you have to do is prepare. Now, what is preparation for lean times, layoffs and stuff? Number one, you've got to go ahead and get you some attitude money. And this is a big, big issue for a lot of people with getting attitude money, saving money, and this is something that I cover in one of the courses that's at the new Hustlers Kung Fu Tech, where we talk about how to manage your money and all that other stuff. So that's, that's huge because here's the thing. It's real hard to prepare for being in the bathtub when you're already in the tub, if you understand what I'm saying. And one of the things that you have to do, and this is one of the things I keep preaching, start a business, start a business, start a business. Can you start a business during a recession and be fine and start making a lot of money in a recession? Absolutely. Now, what is this gonna take? First of all, let's go ahead and, uh, there's a lady by the name of Kimberly Mitchell. She has a YouTube channel and she does a very good job of this. All of these so-called lucrative side hustles that take not a lot of time, not a lot of energy, not a lot of stuff. She actually goes ahead and tries to do them. And the thing is, here's a person who's trying to do all of these YouTube internet side hustles and nine times out of 10, the side hustles don't work. When she actually goes through it, she walks through it. Her name is Kimberly Mitchell. Check her out, she does a good job. So this is huge. The, this whole notion of having a side hustle that takes no time, no energy, no money is a false paradigm. It's a false paradigm. So this is, you know, first thing, go ahead and get your money together. Second thing, have an understanding of time. Have an understanding of the things that you need to do to become successful. And I'm gonna say this as clear as I can. Number one, you will be working more. You will be doing more. You will keep your job once again. And this is something else. I don't like quit your job and start your business. I think that is foolishness, 100% foolishness. 
quitting your job, killing your income source, and then starting a business that, you know, because typically, unless you're doing a service business, it takes time for these things to actually start to gel and make money. So this is why you need your job while you're building your small business. And this is why we need to get away from the term side hustle, because when you say side hustle, from a mental standpoint, it's about creating this side hustle that doesn't take you a lot of time, doesn't take you a lot of energy. You can create the side hustle on the side and make all this money on the side versus actually thinking in terms of starting a real small business where you're gonna put up capital, where you're gonna put up energy, where you're gonna put up time. So th this is things, you can actually start a small business right now in your free time. And that's where we need to be thinking because um, what is a recession? A recession is the economy took a few steps back. The economy did not die. The economy did not explode. Just took a few steps back, which means people are still going to a grocery store. People are still going to Target. People are still going to Macy's. People are still shopping on Amazon. So with this step back, it's just a step back in the economy, but the economy doesn't stop it doesn't stop. So with that, having that notion, having that side hustle, one of the things that you have to do is have an understanding of your capabilities and the things that you can do as a person to go ahead and start generating income. And this is one of the things I'm gonna start talking about because there's literally a million and one ways to start generating income if you go ahead and take the advantage of I am starting a small business uh, this is where I can do the most I can create the most I can set myself up to be quite significant in setting up my business and there, there's a lot of ways you can do it there's a ton of ways you can do it and one of the things that you have to do Let's talk service business. There are some of you who are desperate for that cash, desperate for that cash. So a service business is going to be the best way for you to start a business and start making some cash pretty quickly outside of credit repair. I don't really know what's going on with credit repair. That was something I was looking and getting into, but I don't really know about credit repair as a service business. I, I, don't, I don't know about that. You know, if you're doing credit repair, let me know. But the thing is, I, I'll tell you a story. And this happened a long, long time ago. Long, long time ago. This happened during the storage auction phase. I had a student who bought my book and then got into some of the reselling training. And I get an email from him. Hey, Glendon. I got laid off today. And I was like, oh man, I'm really sorry. He said, don't be. He says, due to your training, I was making almost, I was making close to my job income from my side business. Now, here's the thing. When he got laid off, he had been doing his side business for over a year. So he had time to build it up. He says, you know, now I'm getting laid off. I'm getting a benefits package, then I get unemployment, and he says, now I have even more time to dedicate to the storage auction business. So he was perfectly fine because he had already set up something before the calamity. And this, this is the thing you, you gotta understand. You need to go ahead and set yourself up before thing, bad things happen. And this is one of the ways you can do this. You can like, one of the things I'm getting ready to do is start talking about a lot of stuff that I do that I really don't mention, that I didn't talk about, that you can do to go ahead and position yourself to make start making some additional income and building up and protecting yourself. Because like resell, I heard of this thing the other day on a watch a YouTube video, and I never even knew it existed. It was called Reseller's Basement. 
And it's a discord with resellers who are chipping in and chiming in and putting out all of the stuff that they do to do resale. Now, resale for many of you could be a sustainable and durable business for you to resell stuff on eBay, to resell stuff on Craigslist, to resell stuff on Facebook Marketplace, to resell stuff anywhere. That could be a viable side business, but it's going to be a challenge because there's so many people who are doing reselling um, to find your best items, to get your best stuff. But this could be a doable thing, and this is how I got started, reselling. Reselling stuff on face, not Facebook. Uh, Facebook, actually, I did sell some stuff on Facebook. It was before Facebook Marketplace, but I actually did sell quite a bit of stuff on Facebook just from my Facebook profile when I had one. <laughs> before my Facebook profile got hacked. And um, yeah, I did. But typically, my resale community, my resale time really existed on eBay and Amazon sold probably a few million dollars worth of stuff on eBay and Amazon. But the thing is, I had a system, I had a strategy. I just didn't try to sell any and everything from the same resale ID. I had different unique IDs to sell different products. There was one ID, we used to sell uh, big girl clothing. And it was very lucrative to sell big girl clothing. It, it just kind of blew my mind how much that stuff would go for, because uh, this would not work today. This was from the old eBay. But I would like buy a unit, and I bought this unit, and this girl was extremely fashionable. She was um, 3X, whatever that is, in female size, but she wore a size eight shoe. But her clothing, 99 cents, her shirt, her blouses, her dresses and stuff, would start them off at 99 cents and they would go to 30, 40, 50 dollars a piece. Now, this doesn't really work with the new eBay, uh, the way that things have changed, because essentially, if you're selling on eBay today, you have two type of clients. You have your eBay regulars who will go ahead and buy, buy it now, where you have it set for a price and they may negotiate with you, but they typically buy it. And then the audience that will bid on your auctions, there is like two different audiences, it's two different groups of people. The people who will buy it now usually will pay more money and you will get your money faster. Uh, the people who will do auctions will like literally drag it out. And if they pay more than they think they would, they will get pissed and just walk away and you'll never hear from them because there is really no penalty to not finishing up. You could just say, look, I'm not interested in this. Please cancel the auction. And they're, they're free. They're fine. And eBay is not going to do anything to the buyer. But you as the seller, you can run into a lot of issues selling on eBay if you do not treat your customers well. I can tell you that from personal experience. So the whole thing is, yes, we're having a recession. Yes, we have these things going on in the economy. However, one of the things that you have to understand is by getting busy, by setting yourself up, by doing certain things, you can go ahead and create a system, a set of things that will enable you to fight the recession. Instead of just sitting there and just dealing with it, you will be able to fight the recession. You will be able to actually do a lot more to protect yourself and to build yourself up. So we're going to be talking about side businesses, um, small businesses, how to set it up, your LLC game, the art of holding, and that's something else. I'm getting ready to I may do that today, put up the art of holding in the hustlers kung fu dot tech. I may put that there. And then we're going to get into a lot of consulting, a lot of talking about how to start a small business, how to get traffic for your small business and how to set certain things up. Because one of the things that you should really acknowledge is you can do this if you put your mind and attitude 
towards being successful. You can do this. But the thing is, you gotta have the right attitude. You know, this is, once again, her name is Kimberly Mitchell. Go to the YouTube search bar and just look at her videos of all of these so-called side hustles that she's tried and the majority of them just don't work. They just don't work because what I am seeing, and this is part of the YouTube economy, the YouTube economy is a unique economy. Let's talk about the YouTube economy. And this is something you can do if you want to do it. Uh, the YouTube economy is if you get a YouTube channel and you put out a concept and an ideal, doesn't matter if the concept of ideal works. Doesn't matter. If you can put this a concept of ideal in YouTube, it starts getting traction because the YouTube algorithm is like this. If it, it gets views, it gets tractions, people watch it, YouTube algorithm would dramatically promote that video whether it works or not, going back to Kimberly Mitchell. Kimberly Mitchell goes through some of your more popular, let's call them the side hustle YouTubers. That is a niche, that is an ideal. Once again, if you want to do it, you could do it. But it doesn't matter if the side hustle actually works. Doesn't matter. What matters is, can you get attention to that video where you can um, go ahead and get yourself positioned in the YouTube ecology where that video gets views and that video gets views, you get more subscribers, your YouTube channel grows. Once again, uh, there are YouTubers who have put up stuff that Kimberly Mitchell has actually done the actual work. She walks you through it. It doesn't work. And these videos get 100, 200, 300, 400,000 views on YouTube because they have infiltrated the, um, and they infiltrated the YouTube algorithm. And also there's something I call the side hustle crew. This is a group of people who are looking for the perfect side hustle. They're looking for that perfect thing that they can do in their spare time and make a lot of money without a lot of effort, without a lot of work, without a lot of participation. This is what they're looking for. That side hustle that fits perfectly into their life without them having to make a bunch of changes, which just goes to the antithesis of the things I talk about. Typically, starting a successful business will change you. It will change your life. It will change your schedule. It will change your habits. This is, this is why I feel that people who are in that side hustle crew never actually find anything that builds and makes any real money because they're looking for something that will come in and immediately impact their life the way that it is without them making any changes. No changes whatsoever. No changes at all. They just come in and do this thing. And yeah, that's why they never make any money. That's why they never build any money because they don't want to do the work. They don't want to build a proper business. They don't want to do any of that. And this is why they find themselves in this position of watching their favorite side hustle YouTube channels, looking for that perfect side hustle. And I've spoke about this before, but the one I knew I knew it wasn't gonna work, and this guy put up this video, you can make $1,400 per day by going to Google, finding news articles, taking these news articles, take them to spend, spend something, and have them rewritten, and then sell them to these publications. Here, here, here's the thing, here's the thing. These publications that are making money, they're making money because they're putting out reputable, good articles. They're not putting up, and this is the thing, AI is very, very powerful very, very powerful, but AI doesn't have a personality yet. And this is something that shows up in the writing. And this is why these AI detectors are able to pick up when an article was written by AIs. And I guarantee you that these publications that are paying real money for these articles are running it through an AI detection, not because they don't want to pay you. That, that's not the point. They want an article that's gonna resonate with their website and typically 
AI produced articles are somewhat dry and somewhat, they have no tone, they have no, they, they have no personality, none whatsoever. So this creates a situation where these companies that are paying money because they're making money, they know that they need to put out the proper articles. So I guarantee you all of these companies who are taking these articles and they're paying money, they're, they're, they're going through a vetting process. And I knew instantly when I saw the video that it wasn't going to work. I knew it wasn't going to work, but once again, doesn't matter if it works. The only thing that matters is it gets into the YouTube algorithm, it gets views, it gets traction, and then people can start, you know, the thing is, uh, I see a lot of stuff on YouTube that is wrong. Like I tried to drop shipping for seven days. I tried drop shipping for 30 days. That is not enough time to do anything from a business standpoint. And this is why people keep getting these retarded results because they're not actually trying to do anything. They're not trying to build anything and tr not trying to set anything up. So this is why they keep getting these bad, bad results. But once again, instead of stressing about the upcoming recession, prepare yourself, start building a side business, start doing something, start creating something, start positioning yourself where you can go ahead and start making some of this money. This is one of the things you can do. All right, so if you're interested in a consulting call, if you're interested in, and I got some ways I gotta do this, so uh, I'll put this in the uh, app. But one of the things that you have to do, you know what? I will create a different type form. Yeah, I'll just separate the calls. So one of the things that you have to do and look at is to understand that we're getting into the season where we should be busy, where we should be working on stuff. So what I will do is separate the calls. I would have a call for the mentorship program and I will have an app for the consulting calls. And yeah, we will set that up where you can actually go in and set yourself up for a consulting call where they're about building an LLC, doing the YouTube thing, it all just depends. So we will go ahead and set that up. So that's all we have right now. So that'll be in the first comment, check that out. And I will see you guys in the next one.